we're moaning and groaning here, <laughs> but we're okay. How we're are okay. you? Uh, I'm exhausted. This uh, getting over uh, Valentine's Day. This was a uh, a very tough year for Why? for the snow. Oh, okay, yeah. The cold. My St. Louis Park store, the parking spots in front of it, still have eight feet of snow. I have no parking in front of the store. Yeah. And, you know, and, and people want to, you know, in general retail, you want to shop and get out. I've been trying to get my guy over there to move the snow. Mm-hmm. And, and and he can't get there because there's other things going on and, you know, trying to get there in the middle of the night. The city has, I mean, on Valentine's Day, they actually had things in the snowbank saying no parking. Now, it made, made sense because if you actually parked there, three-fourths of your car was going to be on Excelsior Boulevard. Oh, well, that's you a know, problem. So, yeah. But, I mean, so 99 out of 100 people are not going to park there anyway. Yeah. But for that one person who was, you know, that mm-hmm. fucking clueless. Mm-hmm. And I just... And then there, then there was the cold. And then there's the... Um, I, I've got a... a oh, one of my poor managers uh, slipped and, and mangled the hell out of her ankle. So where I was just... It's been exhausting. I mean, to get 20 inches of snow, in, and plus the cold weather we had for the two weeks before Valentine's Day, yeah, um, which is, you know, one, one, one lot didn't get plowed for like three days because my landlord didn't tell me that the guy who does his truck broke down. Now, it took me like 45 minutes to get somebody over there because, well, I'm good at that shit. Right. But I am now completely and utterly exhausted. I mean... I I sort of like Valentine's Day. Yeah, my guy comes over and cooks me dinner and all that. Not not this year because I had a bad allergic reaction to medic and medicine. So we'll just do it later. But it, honestly, I just there was no there was no joy in Valentine's. Now I saw some <laughs> lovely. I, it was nice though because I saw all sorts of people on Instagram saying, "Been with this gal or been with this guy." I mean, it was it was sweet as hell. I mean, so so I sort of lived vicariously through others. Yeah, but I had an exhausting Valentine's well, week. Well, you know, was, I hope you had a. I hope you had something pleasant. You, uh, know. you know, I didn't have anything unpleasant. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, kind of like you, you know. Um, and I, I'm sorry, but I think that what your guy did for you oh. um, was just as romantic as cooking you dinner. Just real quick, tell everybody because oh, I love this. Um, normally, my guy cooks me dinner. But um, I had spent the day um, with a very bad reaction to antibiotics, so I'm puking. I mean, I actually puked while driving. <coughs> he came over, you know, didn't cook for me, but he did, in fact, dig out the end of my driveway so my daughter could get to her um, re- uh, 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 interview. Because when the city plows come by, they put up one hell of a snowbird at the oh, end yeah. of the driveway. Yep. There was no way she was getting her car over that. Yep. And then uh, he uh, ran to the store to get me a ginger ale and some bread to make some toast. Because there's a gang of uh, just a gang of teenage girls that comes over to the house at lunch every day, so I never have any bread left, and it was just really it was highly romantic. That is, I romantic. mean, it really was. I am, yeah, and I, I am, I am miserable. There is nothing about me that is sexy at all. So he's just holding my hand, and we're like watching a video on my phone. Ah, because it was just it was just too uncomfortable. You didn't have glasses on, so Aww. watching the TV across the room was not going to happen. And just because I know you, and, and mm-hmm. I, this is said in sympathy, but you don't look like yourself yet. No, <laughs> you look like you don't feel well. Uh, so I'm I would, sorry to hear. I, I'm probably highly uh, dehydrated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, your eyes are like yeah. at half mast. Yeah. You poor thing. It has been. Yeah, it was it was it was not a pleasant day. I'm not, you know, but you know, I came, you know, and everything, you know, everybody just my my mom stayed late to do some stuff, which means I had to like, you know, yell at her for being in the building by herself, which is icy. But you know, oh, but then yeah. again, my IT guy came in to check on something, so he made sure to uh, to walk her out to the car. That's nice. And here's the cutest thing, because so I get a, so I get a text from one of my employees saying your mom is still here and I have to leave, and I'm like, okay, I'll check on her. And then about a half hour later, I get a. a a text from uh, from Rob going, I walked your mom out to her car. <laughs> that's really cute. See, that stuff is awesome stuff. Yeah. So, it's very loving, mm-hmm. loving hearted of yeah. people, you know. Well, okay, I did see one humorous thing. They were showing uh, Valentine's Day, funny Valentine's Day gifts and things mm-hmm. that people, and there was an Instagram photo. Um, some husband bought his wife a new toilet and he, he made a sign that said happy Valentine's day and stuck it on the brand new toilet. Mm -hmm. So they must've been doing something. So uh, not entirely Mm -hmm. unlike that. I got a new bathtub because, and it was honestly, I, I love myself a bath. There are days when I'm in that. I mean, I know that I probably shouldn't waste that much water, but I will be in the tub like twice. Okay. But here's the thing Mm -hmm. that's so cool about this. So while we still had our kitchen torn out last year, 
um, before it was finished, my husband decided that tearing the bathroom out would be also a good idea. Thankfully, we do have two. He did that in July. So my bathtub has been disabled since July. And finally mm-hmm. yesterday, he and the plumber put the new one in. But here's the cool thing. It's basically the same one that I had. It's a jacuzzi tub, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. But this one now has an extra heater on it underneath. So, so it, it keeps, keeps the, the water, water warmer. Oh, oh, I can't. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, there's the thing, you know, because you, you get the tub, and then, but you, who wants to be in like in a tepid jacuzzi? Right. I mean, and yeah. Turning on yeah. more hot water, yeah. either you've run, run out, out or you're wasting more water. water. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. When oh, just, that no, that is that is an outstanding Valentine's I'm pretty kit. excited. Yes. So mm-hmm. now if they can just get the freaking vanity, you know, just mm-hmm. just get the thing finished. Okay. Oh. Let me lighten. Let me lighten the mood a little bit for you because, mm-hmm. um, you know, I go through spurts with business of having to fly a lot, and mm-hmm. I can honestly say, and I'm knocking on wood, that I have never suffered one of the most those horrible stories that you hear about people being trapped for hours and hours and hours on a tarmac and no food with overflowing toilets with mm-hmm. puking kids. You know, whatever. I've never had yeah, that experience. The, I mean, there is like a passenger bill of rights. Like if you're there for like two hours, they have to give you drinks and they have to have a bathroom available and they have to let you off, but they don't have to let you back on the plane. See, they forgot about that part. So now I know why people, I was wondering, why don't people get off the plane? Oh, Because they don't have to let you back on and they don't have to take the luggage out. So... Oh my God. See, mm-hmm. it's just not right. It's yeah. just not right. And, and a lot of these things, it's just, you know, it's crap. I just, mm-hmm. I'm not okay with it, but thankfully I've never suffered that and I never will. But mm-hmm. here's something that happened that honestly, okay. South Carolina, the Florence regional airport, February 10th. Okay. Shut down for two hours. Why? Because a woman wearing nothing but a pair of underwear was streaking across the tarmac. And this wasn't a, woo, call me a streaker kind of streak thing. She was like a crazed maniac running across the tarmac. So they they kept flights circling for an hour and a half. Some people were telling stories about that. Mm-hmm. They closed the airport down. Like, I don't know what a naked person she couldn't. They could tell that she didn't have a bomb. Let me just put it to you that way. Mm-hmm. She escaped into the woods and they kept that airport closed until she, they caught her. And she's being, you know, evaluated for mental health. And they're not sure if she's going to get the indecent exposure charges. But my point is, and I'm not joking about this, the charges are less about being naked for me than they are all the money that could have cost other people for that. I I wonder if they're thinking, I mean, who knows, is this a distraction? You know what I mean? Do we throw a naked person out and everybody's focused on this and then something something else else is going on over here? Oh, that's really smart. I didn't even think of that. I mean, you know, I can't imagine, though, that it takes more than a few minutes to figure out what it's you know going on because i would i would yeah yeah i did I, that no and it wasn't even florida no it was south carolina have you seen the joke lately it's about but but uh, just anyone goes to florida they're always like watch out for florida man you know because it's always a florida man a florida you know oh, what i mean yeah yep yeah so watch out for florida man oh, and i'm God. just and i'm like it's because you know it's just it's just this thing i don't know yeah i know because it just it, it and it's really funny because how much you want to bet that if oh I forgot to turn off holy stuff too no worry yeah no worry. um how much you want to bet that if she'd just been like running around like in sh- in a bikini it'd be less of an issue but the naked is to more so got the um I mean what is it about naked I mean people are still you know it's like they don't want to tat it, it's like it's it's like a shield nobody wants to go near a naked person. <laughs> Maybe, well, you know in those I mean? situations, that's what, that's, what that's what I'm saying. Is that it? Just if it, how much you would have bet if she was in a bikini, it'd been less of an issue. I, yeah, I don't. I, you know, it's just we're, we're the the psyche about law enforcement and and the naked person. I mean, you know, there's got to be a rookie they can throw out there and say, "Go get her." Oh, that they because do. That, that's they how that. That's how. The, yeah, on the cop shows about it. I did mm-hmm. the naked guy last time. You have to catch the naked guy this, this time. time. Yeah. yeah. It's just this. It's just this thing. I mean, I just. I wonder honestly how. How much like just less stressful, the entire world would be much less the United States if we were just so much less concerned about nudity. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you know, you had a genius point though about her being a distraction mm-hmm. for you know a possibly yeah. dubious plot because that's. But, but, saying is that you know if nudity wasn't a distraction you know if it's like i'll just go get the naked person yeah but you know it took longer because she was naked 
God, you're, sometimes you freak me out with how astute you are. Um, okay, this is weird. I heard about this, and anybody who's interested in gender issues right now, because it's a very um, well, fluid thing. Yeah, yeah, fluid. Yeah, I mean, it, they're they're realizing it, there just isn't two people. You know, considering the fact, and we've talked to this before, that the physical attributes of a human being in the womb develop before the brain decides how it's going to develop. Okay. So this is why sometimes things don't match up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and, and at any point, things can sort of change. If they they develop at the same time, but they don't. I mean, that's all proven. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but as a a society, Mm -hmm. not just in the United States, I think everywhere, we're grappling with the mm-hmm. way, you know, things have been set up for this mm-hmm. two gender system. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's, you know, driver's licenses have come into play and, you know, mm-hmm. all this other kind of stuff. Well, so and also even Dr. Markey calls this alphabet soup. Um, mm-hmm. But this story is really interesting. And you can look at the interview. Um, you can see it on YouTube. OK, so and it's of all people. It's Tucker Carlson speaking to a woman from Fox News, speaking to a woman named Julie Beck. Julie Beck is a lesbian who was thrown off of Baltimore's LGBTQ commission because she called a transgender person. She referred to this person as a man, a person who identified as a woman, as a man. And you could say, well, that's insensitive. But wait, there is more. This person had had I don't know how many rapes went to jail for raping women. Mm -hmm. This transgender person dressing as a female, they put this person in a female prison at which time this trans person raped two more women in, in custody Mm -hmm. and somehow in whatever their conversation was, she's, she called him her a man Mm -hmm. and got thrown out of the, the commission. And her point is, if you are identifying as a woman but using male parts to rape them, it's fascinating interview, and I still don't know entirely what I think, but it was just like, oh, my God, here's somebody who is very into women's issues, mm-hmm. and I, I, it's, it's very messy, Colleen, but you should watch this woman talk. It's, it's like, I don't know what to say. What are your thoughts? The, it, it, is, it is very frustrating because you don't. People look for... A hundred percent in there, in anything, you know, you're, there, there's only one way to do something or one way to think about something, but someone is always going to figure something out. So whether this person is, um, you know, is right or wrong to, uh, you know, dead name or dead pronoun for something like that, uh, you know, right. You know, she, you know, I, th- she may have hurt her cause. I mean, this person, this other person did a you know, horrible thing and there may, you know, and it might, and it might be a ruse, you know, they just figured out a way to do something or it's going through there. Maybe we need to have like a third prison set, you know, <laughs> a third, uh, you know, a third ward, you know, in prisons, you know, for, for separate people. But cause you're, you just going to want to call, you know, you know, a thousand times, you know, all the times, you know, everybody focuses it on the one time where it doesn't work out. You know, is is that supposed? You know, to 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 say that the, um, to say that uh, you know trans people aren't real or they don't get to choose. I mean, you know, yeah, one 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 human being, who is obviously a predator, regardless of their pronoun. <laughs> you know, and so I, I know, and, and but so, so so defeating so de- so 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 getting, so trying to make your point by by using. You know, I mean, you. I mean, why not just say this female with a penis? Because there are lots of. I mean, if you're look, there are there are women with penises and there are men with vaginas. If you do it that way, she could have gone that route. I just, I think that yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, because the folks that are transitioning that aren't all the way through yet. I mean, they look completely female. They just happen to have a penis. Yeah. So it, they could have. You know, she, she may have hurt her own cause. You know, and, and, and mess with one of things by by focusing once again on on the um uh, on on the label versus the action. Yeah, I, she does that. I mean, I, I, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you should watch the interview though, um, mm-hmm. because her point had to do with safety and and biology. You know, and being 
over the ability to overcome. Yeah, she, you know, I mean, but it could have been it was, it was very easy to say this woman has a penis and yeah. has used it as a weapon. So obviously there needs to be we need to come up with a third place, another way of dealing with it. And they haven't done it yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, but again, I, I think it kind of goes back to, you know, this whole controversy down in um, Virginia right now where, I mean, it's the craziest thing. They've got their three top people in all in trouble, um, two for the same thing and another one being accused of sexual assault. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, you they're talking about, I thought this was interesting. They're talking about um, the governor who they're like, well, you know, he did this, you know, back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> The, I can't remember whether or not I was in. Oh, it's been a while. Whether I was the, one of the black faces of the hood. But, oh no, that wasn't the time that I did it. Right. But, but honestly, to some extent, there is there is a very large segment of men between the ages of probably twenty five and a hundred that, by the standards that have uh, occurred in the past two years, are no longer qualified for public life. Oh, probably. Yeah, but and you know, and the thing is that I mean, and, and if and if it takes a whole, if it takes that many hundreds of thousands of men to like, maybe that will teach everyone under twenty five that maybe this is not the route to go. No, yeah, <laughs> and actually, my point wasn't okay. really about yeah. oh. about the blackface, but but you know, it's mm. weird. The, the only thing about Northam Northam that I was going to say is that. Mm. His record, he really does have a pretty good record yeah. of of behaving well with the, you know, and and whatever. But then now this goes back. So I guess what I'm saying with this this lesbian mm-hmm. is that she uses the wrong pronoun, but it doesn't mean that her heart's in a bad place. I just think yeah, we're getting in a slippery yeah, slope with some yeah, of that. Yeah, you need. Well, we talked about this before about. Okay, so people did these things. Does um does one or two mistakes negate? All the positive. Well, and, and, and at this point, actual acts. Yeah, natural acts. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, and that seems to be where they are right now. It doesn't really, I mean, if you would have, you know, the thing is, is that it, when it pops up like this, that's the problem. Folks probably should be searching through the yearbooks and different things saying, you know, you know, now that I look at my past, these things have occurred, but these record, you know, but this has been my action since yeah. then. Yeah. And I, I really do. I, I look at that and I, it, it is quite right. I mean, have you learned from things that you did? Have you, have you gone forth? I mean, you know, if you continue to do things and there are lots of people who continue to do oh, yeah, the, the nasty sure. things and don't change, for sure. but yeah, there, there needs to be, um, I mean, you know, uh, a point where someone says, you know, there, the actions of the past 20 years, um, overcome the action of one thing they did 35 years ago. I know it's mm-hmm. it's really getting murky. But then let's let's talk about Justin Fairfax for a minute, the lieutenant governor. Um, and I disagree with people calling for his resignation um, because you know, and apparently he has two credible accusers who I definitely think they should be heard. But here's my problem with this uh-huh. situation. You know, the Me Too movement brought out this highlighted how many women don't ever bring it up because oh, they yeah. t- right okay i mean the majority i mean vast right. majority right mm-hmm. for sure well these two women now are bringing it up so if they are now willing to um to to be recognized and to speak about it i wish that they would go ahead and file actual charges and put it through the court system instead of the court of public opinion and give the guy due process mm-hmm. you know what i mean because yeah. now they're out so let's let's get justice for you then if and you know and and let it be you know Prosecuted. Yeah, it needs to, yeah, uh, for for anything because there's going to be, uh, um, I just, I mean, and then the, then you've got the stuff like, uh, have you, um, have, did you see that the, uh, uh, the CEO of REI just stepped down? No, I didn't see that yeah. one. For having a long time mutually consensual affair with the CEO of another outdoor company. <laughs> And they think, and it's only, and, and it's it's all consensual to all adults, but it's just because it's a conflict of interest. And I'm just like, so, huh? I don't understand how they, you know, going through there, they're supposed to be all transparent. And I'm like, I mean, was, was he screwing someone from Land's End? I don't I mean, know. You know, just really funny. Or Eddie funny. Bauer, who yeah, knows? I just like, you know, but I just laugh at it because I'm just like, so this is where we're, I mean, like, you know, like, so, I mean, I suppose... The you know high up person at Coca Cola should not be having an affair with someone from Pepsi, 
I don't know. I, I mean, I, you know, it could, yeah. it could be something in his employment contract. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, no, but I'm sure there is. But just, I'm just like the 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 sex thing is just once again, you know, who someone is sleeping with seems to, you know, you know, even 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 consensual um, relationships yeah. are are messing with stuff. Yeah, and that could simply be, you know, a <laughs> shareholder issue. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean that's you know. what it is. They're just saying, you know, possible conflict of interest, blah blah blah. And I get that, but I I'm pretty sure that. 15 20 years ago this is this is a, this is a non issue for sure i just mm-hmm. i don't want this just in fairfax's I, I want them to go all the way through yeah. it and have it settled one way or another i i hate it when people start calling on people for resigning yeah. until they've put something through process they and do, I, they, I do, would, they do need to i mean the thing is if it's past statute of limitations maybe they need to look at Extending the statute of limitations. I think that'd be great. But like they did for uh, um, childhood sex crimes in the yep. church here in the state of Minnesota. Yep. And if that, you know, could, if, so if you do that, then possibly they would, um, folks would have a, <coughs> would have the recourse that was going through there. Yeah. So maybe that's something that, you know, legislatures need to, to yeah. look at is yeah. extending that statute. Yeah. I mean, we have our state attorney general here in Minnesota, Keith Ellison, had accusations, um, you Mm -hmm. know, lodged against him. He's elected Mm -hmm. after those accusations came out. Mm -hmm. So to me, you know, unless this person wants to, you know, it's not it's he's not being called to resign. No. And so they should do whatever they want. But Mm -hmm. if somebody's being told, hey, walk away from your career and they want due process, I think they should get it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't think yeah, they haven't made any haven't made any decisions, but it is it is sort of fascinating to some extent how oh, some folks are, are are so fast to say you need to resign, you need to do this. Yeah. And you know, you got you got to maybe look at some your own you know, own behavior in glass houses and all oh, those cliches. I hope so. I think we're getting I think we're getting just way it's, some of this is getting to be way too much for me. Um Okay, this is real. How, how are you doing over there? Are you okay? Oh, just shifting straight. When you spend that much time being ill, I'm sore. Oh, cage. okay. So, so you got to move around. So I had, I had uh, where, since I'm wearing leggings and we're on a leather couch, I sort of slouched into a highly uncomfortable position. <laughs> so now we will, we will, we will move into a much more comfortable position. Well, all righty then. Listen, you know, think, like sometimes I'm actually like, oh god, this is a lot of fun, and like. Damn! How the hell do we get this way? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. But we have to, we have to like we're, we're falling off the bed or we're doing you know yeah. Sometimes you just got to stop. You got to readjust. Get back into it. Mm-hmm. Um, this I've this is interesting. So Tyra Banks, mm-hmm. um, you probably you know she's a I haven't model. heard about her in a while. What 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 has she done to to make the news? Um, she has. Did she throw um, something? She's opening up this. This uh, this event, it's it's no, it's an experience called Model Land, and it's in Santa Monica. And what it is is it's basically um, an open air shopping. Mo- there's there's this open air shopping mall, and then you go to Model Land, and you get to have the experience of being a model, walk on a runway, wear um, you know couture. Design, yeah, couture stuff. Now, has she in fact made couture stuff that will fit people yes. that are not a size yep. zero? She said, I, "It's my calling." Here's a quote: "It's my calling to bring modeling to the masses." And she said, you know, "It's masses uh, are big, so we better." Yeah, she mm-hmm. wants to expand the definition of beauty based on her own pain of being told no that she couldn't do something because she was curvy or because she was black. And she said, "So it's like a theme park kind of thing, and it's a twenty-one thousand square foot attraction. It's permanent there, and um, it's going to be a fantasy version of the modeling world. So you know, you'll pay a certain you know." fee and well, be able to do sort all this of a stuff. fun birthday thing go and they they do the whole do thing runway. yeah and, and like do your hair and do your makeup and throw you in some really fun clothes yeah so in other words it's like a full body glamour shots but kind like of. a full you know yeah is that cool and hopefully it's stuck i've got a picture right on my desk of the glamour shot that i did in the 80s i've dug it up out of something here in the office i've been laughing at it for like a couple of years now i just leave it there for the entertainment value of it it is funny uh, I, I mean because I'm wearing it, some sort of gold Lame jacket and the hair's reasonably big. It's very funny. Yes. Yeah, so, well, you know, one thing I've never done that, but one thing that some people told me, and this was because I don't even think that they're around anymore, no, but, no, no. but, um, when they still were toward the end of their, you know, and the, the bud was definitely off the rose, people would say that they had gone there and that 
that they wanted them to wear their stuff and that they it stunk and it was nasty. And I was like, oh, God, ew. <laughs> I can see that they probably did uh, let the standards slip a little bit. But uh, this is when uh, I was fairly new when I did it. You know, did yeah. it. it was just a hoot. Oh, no, mm-hmm. a lot of people did that. That was yeah. a big, hairy deal for a long time. Mm-hmm. You're going to be mad at this next one. <laughs> it's going to make you mad. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so um, there's uh, in Harlem, uh, there's a lingerie store. Um, a man got caught on a uh, closed circuit TV, um, shattering a lingerie store window before abruptly yanking out a mannequin of former President Obama and hurling it to the ground, grabbed his arm off. And apparently the window was um, a President Obama dressed as a prince and President Trump dressed as a princess um, and uh, wearing his MAGA hat. And the suspect was recorded pacing on the sidewalk, opening up a gate into the construction area, (laughs) taking a cinder block, throwing it into the window. And apparently he was um, a Trump supporter, very angry with Obama's policies. Um, caused a thousand dollars worth of damage. What an idiot. What are your thoughts? Um, quite a number of years ago, uh, during the uh, Clinton administration, uh, someone complained about my Fridley store window. Now, mind you, we all know the Victoria's Secret photographs in the windows and the stuff they have in their stuff is, I mean, mine are PG 13 or PG, you know, way more boring, especially back then, than anything like that. Someone complained about the damn window. And I went, I'll change the goddamn window. So the next day I happened to put a male mannequin in a suit and drop it straw and put a female mannequin in a blue dress and a, and a uh, oh, beret and uh, put a couple cigars in the window. And so I said, you want me to change the fucking window? I'll change the window. Don't fuck me. <laughs> yeah. So did anything happen from it? No, no. The, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the person who complained never said a thing again. Good. Good. I mean, yeah, I just, yeah, I just, I, I, did they catch the, 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 yeah, yeah good. Yeah. Going they did. Through there. Oh, good. Now he can have a, um, a nice felony record and he had, oh, I won't be able to vote again. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, knock it off. I mean, you can be against something, but you mm-hmm. know, just settle down. I mean, everybody, come on, man. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, no, no, I'm not going to sneeze. <laughs> oh, I thought you were. I was no. going to wait for you. Mm-hmm. I was. Um, so this guy, up in Canada, his name is Dave Asman, A S S M A N, and he can't get a license plate with his last name on it. The review committee said no. Didn't they? Wasn't that a? Wasn't that a? Uh, that was a Seinfeld episode. Um, uh, of the the neighbor um, Kramer got the wrong plate set in the mail, and it said Assman. Yeah. <laughs> well, Canada said no. <laughs> And um, actually, I guess it's pronounced Osman, but it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah, but it's I mean, I, I can see that you can, you know they just you know why does everybody get offended so easily? I think it's funny. <laughs> I mean, if I saw somebody driving around with a license plate that said "fucker," I would crack up. Oh. I would laugh so hard, like it's yeah. awesome. I, I giggled when uh, uh, folks went uh, when everyone in Minnesota was going. Uh, not so over license plates because my mom has some uh, personalized plates, and I'm like, I wonder if they'll catch those. But no, they were they were, they were my dad's, and you know, and it was just so fun. I said, oh, okay, I guess they're okay. <laughs> um, Canada's kind of active this week. Now that I think about it, Colleen, um, this one's also out of. Well, they sent us all their damn cold. <laughs> Fuckers. No, um, this woman um, wrote her own obituary. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sybil Marie Hicks of Baysville, Ontario, wrote the following. She passed away on February 2nd, 2019, and left behind her loving husband, Ron Hicks, who she often affected, affectionately referred to as a horse's ass. Now, she wrote this, okay? She also wrote that she left behind my children, whom I tolerated over the years, including her oldest son, Bob, who was her favorite. She said she would miss seeing her grandchildren grow up to be the people they're meant to be. She also included other details about her life, um, graduating from you know nursing school and things like that. But she finally says, now I finally have the smoking hot body I always wanted, having been cremated. <laughs> And she oh, wrote that, it. She was that, 82. Mm-hmm. And she went oh. out. So is that not hysterical? <laughs> it's the smoking hot body I, she always know, wanted. I have I have been very entertained by other people's writing lately. The um, 
the, uh, the, the, the house in Pennsylvania that had the, the real estate house. Oh, you did this not run across? I didn't get the pictures open. Okay. It, it, okay. So there was a house in Pennsylvania that had a private sexual oasis, which in other words, is in, in my opinion, the best three words put together for dungeon or bondage room ever is private sexual oasis. But this person, <laughs> the, the, the real estate lady wrote this is great. Within 24 hours, it went completely viral. You got to sort of dig around. Some people have uh, d- screenshotted it and wrote about it, but it was, it was taken off. Uh. You know, they went in and did that. But I think it was, it was the classiest private sexual oasis I have ever seen. Really? And I just, I mean, within, cause I looked at it and about an hour later, and I, I posted it, and I sent it to my sister-in-law, and she posted it. And then about an hour after that, I went to look at it again, and the pictures and the description were gone. That's too bad. <laughs> so it was a listing. So yeah, so so the listing was there, but they just removed the pictures of the of of the of the of the basement, which was the bondage room that had the bed and and a board, and and it had some whips, and it had a, several pieces of furniture. And it was the nicest, classiest thing I'd ever seen. And so I'm like, obviously, this is not a dungeon. This is not a bunch room. This is, in fact, a private sexual oasis. That's fantastic. And I'm, I'm like, that, that is spectacular. And so I, the smoking hot bod, I'm like, how has no one ever thought? I mean, I have not heard someone say that. that I mean, that is spectacular phrasing. Yeah, I love it. And I'm like. It's pretty good. I I love phrases like that. I'm like, I just, I want to be able to come up with. With with a perfect phrase like that, yeah. Private sexuation and smoking hot pot, yeah. Yeah. I uh, I should have paired this at the beginning with the South Carolina story. We're jumping now to North Carolina. This freaks me out. And I saw this girl on TV actually, um, and I think she was handling what happened, you know, pretty well because this would rattle me for years to come. But long story short, she's a college student and she. She's she's at the uh, University of North Carolina Greensboro, and she came home and um, she said she kept hearing this weird noise in her closet and she goes God I thought maybe there was a raccoon in there no in fact it was a guy a thirty year old Andrew Swafford who was in there putting on her clothes and her lingerie and she had a hat and and then when she catches them he goes oh you're pretty can I give you a hug um, and she somehow got out called police he was picked up held on bond, but oh my God. I mean, it's one thing, fetishes are fine, but you don't break into people's houses. Honestly, that would, you know, I just, that is someone who has her shit together. So kudos to her. She was, you know, she, you know, I mean, the person's in the closet probably half undressed anyway, so they're not particularly, you know, going to do anything. It was probably fairly obvious that this is what the person wanted to do. Yeah. It wasn't like lunging out at her or anything like that. But even so, just a stranger in your house. I mean, that I just, would freak I, me out so bad. When we were younger, I remember I, I, I'd forgotten about this until I found a small newspaper article that my dad had kept on something that our house got broken into, and we were at the house. You know, oh so we're sleeping like that, but but we were younger, and I don't remember. But obviously, it must. I'm sure that freaked out my, you know, my parents. I mean, our kids were in the house. Yeah. I mean, if, if there was someone, in, I mean, if there was someone in the house, and my daughter was in the house, I may not be all that generous. That person would probably be severely injured. Oh yeah. I would go so mama bear. Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. No. I. I. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. I'm, mm-hmm. I, I had a um, a peeping tom incident. Um, when I was in my very early twenties, it was actually my first, I was 22. It was my first apartment. Um, I had moved a County away. I'd moved from orange County down to San Diego to take a job. Mm-hmm. And, um, they had said when I moved down there, they said, look, there's been a rapist that's been working these two areas. Um, and for those of you that are West coast familiar, um, um, I lived in ocean beach and it was ocean beach and Pacific beach. They were right mm-hmm. next to each other, mission mm-hmm. beach areas. And they said, you know, just watch yourself. And, um, You know, I I lived there for probably six, seven months. And then one night I had come home from visiting my parents really late on a Sunday night because I'd go home, spend the weekend, see them, do my laundry. Yeah, well, I was about to say laundry. Yeah, Yeah. all that kind of stuff. And I got home at about 11 o'clock at night and came in and put my stuff in the house and went to bed. And I had a futon Mm -hmm. bed, obviously very low to the ground back in the day. And then um, I had windows that um, had, uh, I don't know what they're called, Colleen. What are they? When you put them on the window that they, it can only open so much. Oh, 
Yeah. Whatever yeah, they are, you, you know. Mm-hmm. So my window was open probably about three inches, but there was yeah. bars that kept it that that much. Those were open, and then I had um, plantation uh, shutters, the big the big mm-hmm. ones, you know, so very yeah. thick. Okay. So when they get to the bottom, the the shades were closed, but toward the bottom they kind of bag. So I'm falling. I fall asleep. And I'm laying there, and then all of a sudden I hear this breathing. And I, I thought my boyfriend was there, so I kind of reached over, and he wasn't there. And then all of a sudden the realization, and I kind of opened one eye, and there was a man in the planter it, staring down at me. Um, oh, so from outside. And, from yeah, outside okay, into yeah. my – but, I mean, like right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, right, right there. And the first instinct I had was to jump up, but it passed so quickly. I actually got paralyzed with fear. I could not move. I mm-hmm. laid there – praying to God that he couldn't tell that I was awake until he finally left. It felt like a year. It was probably 10 minutes and called the cops and they came and they thought, anyway, long story short, they told me to move, but they go, don't just move from here to wherever you're going to go. Put your shit in storage for a week and then move again. And I had to do that because, um, they, you yeah. know, he, well, he came back a few more times, but I, I'm still wrecked. And that was 20 plus years yeah. ago. You just, it, it's, it's amazing. The power that you know that folks will get you know t- how they can get into your mind oh my I god just, yeah well if you've ever watched a horror movie and you're like why yeah. aren't they running i swear yeah. to god you do get that thing where you 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 freeze because it happened to me yeah. so now i don't yell at the movies anymore yeah i don't so I'm like, yeah oh, fuck, I, I know what that shit's like <laughs> yeah i don't watch horror movies i just don't even go there no not bad. my thing sorry um how about some love sausage i think this is really hilarious um Okay, there were so many places that could go. Oh, okay. It's actual sausage yeah. shaped, shaped in hearts. Like like a little patty sausage? Yes, but they're heart shaped. Oh. And um, they were for sale for Valentine's Day. Um, and uh, they sound I mean, Honestly, amazing. they should be uh, a sell for all the time because what about like birthdays and anniversaries and stuff? I mean, there's, I think, heart shaped heart shaped sausage oh my god that is really really hard to say it is uh it it, it could be an all-year-round thing yeah mm-hmm. yeah i mean it's it's hysterically funny and actually they're they're okay picture a a brat you know but it's yeah. twisted into a heart mm-hmm. and then it's so it's so one it's a casing too it's not just gra- yeah this is even more adorable i know and so the the, the recommended recipe card that this you know how stores will do yeah. that you know sometimes it's like cook two eggs in the middle of it <laughs> you know for like i think that's really cute oh. Oh. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would have bought that had I, had I, had there been any heart shapes on, I can't say it. Heart, <laughs> shaped. heart shaped sausage. Oh my God. Re- yeah. yeah. That's tough. That one. is, oh yeah. That, there's a, yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah. Um, I guess we're going to get a new, um, a bunch of new 270 to pre- be precise, new emojis. I don't use the freaking ones we have now. I just don't. I occasionally use, okay, it was Valentine's Day. And when I posted a little picture of my guy shoveling the end of my driveway mm-hmm. and I pull a heart next, I put a heart around. Yeah, I use that. You know, I've, I've never in my life used the poop emoji. And I maybe have done like the winky smiley face. You've never used the poop emoji? No. <laughs> okay. No. no. I have a particular friend. <laughs> It, we use it a bunch and I actually found a plush pillow poop emoji and she sends me she puts it in situations and sends me pictures it's hysterical oh, yeah. I just, yeah I mean you, you go to the state fair or valley fair or any place like that or any place you can find emoji pillows I mean Walgreens has poop emoji pillows I'm like no I got it for three dollars at a swap meet but it was fantastic mm-hmm. um, but you can uh, there's going to be one that's got fingers making the pinching motion that is supposed to mean small penis. And um, they're now going to have uh, dis- disabled emojis with wheelchairs, mechanical arms, legs, um, sign language, and hearing aids. Okay. I just, I don't, I'm mean, like I said, I don't use them enough to understand the need for, I mean, okay, I don't dis. I don't not understand the need for inclusiveness, but I had no idea because I don't use them that it was an issue. Does that mean? <laughs> well, apparently, I really you know, I, I can never find the ones that I want to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and then I, I also don't want to pay for them. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, no, if it just, sometimes I say, we have a whole bunch of new emojis. I'm like, where? Yep. I, okay. Well, this is what I do when I'm on like the, my texting. But if I'm on like the Facebook messenger, is that different than doing 
fuck it. I, <laughs> I mean, it, if it takes more than a nanosecond for me to figure out, then it's not going to happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so Tinder, I've never been on Tinder. Um, and I, I, it's not going to be my thing. I can tell you that. I mean, well, especially now, not that I'm married, but I would not have used that app. That would just not have been my thing too sleazy for me. Yeah, that's what bars are for. <laughs> God, we're so old. No, but the, I know what you mean. Yeah, the, this one woman put a picture. So I, I guess the this guy that popped up in her feed mm-hmm. as a potential mat, match for her was a selfie of him, but there was a naked man in the background. He snapped it in the gym locker room. Why would you put a? Po- a picture with somebody else's naked dick in it when you're, t- and then so the the social media on it was so funny. We've got the link, okay? Um, but some of the, the comments were like, who, "Can I get the number of the guy in the?" Yeah, I mean, the obviously that's the first thing that I would go for is like, uh, how, 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 "How about him? How about him?" Yeah, I I I wonder, like, okay, if this is, I mean, thirty years ago, a completely different way of hooking up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not that it wasn't, but even a different vocabulary, everything still happened. I mean, this is why, you you know, you went to the um, Ben and Gintz on, on Highway 12, which no longer exists, yeah. and went up to the, waited till you're 21 to wait up so you could go up to the dance floor, you know, and, you know, and then, you know, like, oh, that looks interesting, you know, you're going through there. Now you just look on your phone. What? The, 30 years from now, what? I mean, honestly, what what if if my if my child decides to have children, I can't even imagine the way they're going to meet other human beings. I mean, I have no. I, I, it's going to be so different. Oh, by the way, speaking of that, d- did you ever see the the old Woody Al- Allen movie called Sleeper? You remember it? Do you remember the Orgasmatron? Anybody that's yeah, seen that yeah. movie? Yeah, I mean, I know. I'm sure I have, but it's probably been. I mean, I've got to text you. We've got to. I got to text this picture to you and Megan. I was. I had when we went to buy the bathtub the other day. Mm -hmm. There is a a shower that looks like the orgasmatron. And anybody that has ever seen this movie is the funniest thing. And Woody, I mean, I know Woody Allen's now like out of favor. We didn't know he was perv back in the day, but there, the orgasmatron is like this futuristic thing, but you're not supposed to go in by yourself. And he does, and he comes out like all fried. Yeah. Cause it's like, you're not supposed to go in yeah. without a pri- Very funny. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I digress. When you went Spain, did you go to like Mallorca or Escavalier? Well, or yeah, any- I was down in uh, Mallorca. Okay. Yep. Well, um, the white sands of Escavalier are so beautiful. They've become a haunt. For tourists that want to get naked and have sex on the nude beaches, but they're wrecking the natural dunes. They're disturbing the plants that keep them. And the same thing's happening in Mallorca and everywhere else. And they can't, they, they're just pissed. They're going to need to put, yeah, I, this is a lot of different places that are trying desperately to keep the beaches from eroding. I mean, you, believe me, there has to be a, a, a way to have sex on the beach. That's not a drink. Um, to, um, and not screw up the dunes. It's, I mean, it is beautiful, but I don't understand sex on. I will never understand sex on the beach. The drink is disgusting, and actually doing sex on the beach is way too sandy. I just there's no way. No, no. I know it can be done. I do. It just it does not appeal. Just no. going through there. No. no. Remember no. we talked. We've talked about a few different wedding stories over the years on the Great Northern Sex Cast. Mm-hmm. And uh, this one uh, is pretty interesting. We had the one gal who was trying to get her guests to pay $1,500, oh, yeah. you know, to sponsor the wedding. This one says no murderers at her wedding, but she's not talking about, you know, like serial killers or the lot. She's talking about people that eat meat. So it's, they're well, vegans. About to go. Are we talking about no one can wear leather or are we going for, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even family members, they are not going to, to host them. And um, she's getting a lot of, um, you know, flack for it. People are saying, look, you know, show, you should have used it as an opportunity to prove how great vegan food can be, blah, 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 blah. So but, she's just n- <coughs> not inviting anyone to eat meat. Yeah, pretty much. Well, that's one way to keep the guest list down. Yeah. I mean, honestly, weddings are so damn, damn expensive. That's, yeah. It's just, it. it's, I don't, okay, I've never been married. Um, I've been involved in the planning of several weddings, just, you know, friends and family and stuff like that. Yeah. 
And nobody ever did anything particularly bizarre. And I, I can't think of anyone that was possibly um, a bridezilla out of all the ones I've been in and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I've pretty much done everything. I just, I, I think the pressure just to, you know, the, the pressure that the wedding industry, you know, has put on everyone for the perfect wedding. Yeah. Has, it has made this shit happen. Yeah. He's going through there. Yeah. How can I? How can I not spend a zillion dollars on a wedding? Oh, that's okay. I just won't invite anyone who eats meat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. People are just weird. Um, Steven Tyler of Aerosmith fame. You remember the um, song "Janie's Got a Gun" about the girl running from an abusive. Mm-hmm. Um, Steven Tyler has um, set up a home as a refuge for abused girls near Memphis, Tennessee. He said, this does my heart and soul good. Um, It was dedicated Monday. Uh, He donated $500,000 to renovate what he calls Janie's house. And um, about 14 girls at a time will be able to stay in the house while getting counseling and support. He said he decided to help um, after speaking with victims in a treatment center and talked about all the girls that he'd met. And he said um, he did the first one, actually. This one was for 12 to 18. I guess this is the second one. The first one opened in 2017, and that one is in Georgia. How cool is that? I'm actually surprised. I think he grew up in Boston. So I'm wondering, well, um, a lot of times folks will do this in their own, you know, in their hometown places. Yeah. I, mean, I read uh, one of his biographies, and, he, yeah. you know, he has very fond memories of, you know, growing up Italian, you know, up in the East Coast there. But he must have, com- you know, communities, and, and that's that, that's really awesome. He he seems like an awesome grandpa. I've seen him with his daughters and his grandchildren when they do stuff. Yeah. Or they do stuff. I'm just like, I mean, so I can see him doing that without, without any, I mean, obviously he's going to use his fame to help raise funds for it. Yeah. But he's not doing this to, as far as I can tell, to um, make up for other deficiencies. You know oh, I, mean? I don't be, think yeah, so. Just because when, when folks do really nice, that, see, there's now that's a really pleasant Valentine right there. That's a really good one. And, mm. um, you know, I mean, he wrote the song. The song affected so many people. Mm-hmm. Remember at the oh, time yeah. when it came out? Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, that was the launch of uh, Alicia Silverstone's career. Oh, that's right. She was. She yeah. was the girl. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but oh, I loved her in uh, uh, Clueless. Oh God! Oh my God! That was a funny movie. And was it was it Paul Rudd that played her? No, who was the guy that played her st- her stepbrother? Uh, yeah, I, mean, I can picture him, but it's not. No, it's not. Paul. Very cute guy yeah. though. A different, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Was no. uh, the whole the, I that came across like I don't know. I was. I don't have TV anymore, but whenever whenever I had cable on my it would flip a you have to stop. You just have to stop and watch a couple of scenes because it, it's it's all funny. So it's, it it holds up. Yeah. It really, really holds up. A lot of t- a lot of teen movies don't anymore. Yeah, I'm just going through there, and but uh, that's just oh, no. Okay, that <laughs> we just had a moment. No, we just had a moment. We're like, oh, that's just funny. I well, like that. Yeah. Movie. Well, you know what? I'm glad you got some giggles because you look better now than when oh, we started yeah. the show today. Well, I just, just it was needed to sit down. I've been running around, and it's nice to be able to just chat. <sighs> and it just it's been it's been a uh, it's been a tough week, and now we're just getting ready for uh, spring. Hey, did I tell everyone I already paid for Pride? Some fantasy gifts is going to so be, be back. We're going to be back at Pride okay. this year. So, I mean, I know it's February, but pretty soon uh, uh, it's going to be June, and it's actually going to be a week earlier this year. Oh, really? Because this is the fiftieth anniversary of the Stone of Stonewall and of Stonewall Rights. So there's a lot of stuff going on in New York that last week weekend in June and they didn't want anything to um, c- conflict with it for people who may wanted to participate in both events. Oh, okay. So the re- that's uh, one of the reasons I bring that up is that it's going to be a week earlier this year. Okay. So the second uh, to last weekend in June. It's just nice, to, you know, if you're hearing that just, and, um, and, and if you're not from Minnesota, there might be other places that are doing it earlier at a different time too. For so sure. look into it. So you're not missing it. You know, in the, all the years we've been doing the show now, I can remember, um, you saying, oh, we just, you know, signed up for Pride. And then the next thing we knew, it's like, holy shit, it's here. So I'm really glad you brought it up because I I could I could be liking me some June about now. <laughs> yes, it would be really, it's just, we, we got all of winter in two weeks. We did. And it, and it's continuing on. And I mean, I don't mind. I mean, people can ski and people can do some, I mean, you can snuggle up near a fire. It is, yeah. you know, there, there, there are some very fun and romantic things about the snow, but when you're dealing with the, um, 
uh, with the practicalities of getting snow moved and getting cars started and getting employees to work, it gets a little exhausting. <laughs> yeah. Um, can I just say the remote starting app on my phone is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Heated steering wheel. Oh, my God. Oh. Really? If you really, honestly, just if you really want hot stuff, heated steering wheel. <laughs> it's pretty good. Can I just say, though? I'm not a big fan of the air-conditioned seats, though, because it makes me feel like I'm peeing my pants. I accidentally, I mean, the heated or the air-conditioned? The, the air-conditioned. I accidentally turned on the air-conditioning when it was really cold. And oh. I'm like, oh, oh, bad. I hit the wrong button. Uh, I wasn't planning to turn it all, but I just brushed it when I was pushing. I'm like, why am I so cold? Ah, oh, Jesus. Well, on that note. I'm almost wanted to, like, you know, check out Planned Parenthood to find out something, you know. Why is my butt so cold? Oh, no, it's not, it's not an STD. It's just I've turned on the seats. Oh, my God. <laughs>